AWS App Config is a powerful and feature-rich AWS service. However, it can be a bit overwhelming to learn and get started using it. This video is a beginner introduction to App Config, where we'll learn how it works and then move on to a hands-on demo in the AWS console. So in terms of the specific agenda for today's video, we'll be talking about first, what is AWS App Config? Second, we'll talk about how App Config works. We'll talk about some of the core concepts that you need to know about when working with App Config. We'll do a brief comparison of App Config versus other configuration solutions, such as AWS Parameter Store. We'll talk about the pricing, and then finally go into the AWS console and do a hands-on demo using App Config and a Lambda function. So that's the agenda for this video. Let's talk about firstly, what is AWS App Config? So at its core, App Config lets you create, manage, and deploy application configuration. If you're watching this video, you probably already know what application configuration is, but let's overview it really quick. So in the past, most applications used to deploy configuration for their service as part of their normal code deployments. The problem with that is that if you need to do a new update for your config, you need to also do a new code deployment. So App Config is all about decoupling the deployment of your software and the configuration of your software. So this makes it easier to dynamically change values without having to go through that deployment process. So in terms of some use cases for App Config and just configuration management in general, the most common one is for things called feature flags. I made a whole video about feature flags, what they are and how they work, but fundamentally they're just kind of signposts that you put into your code that can change the behavior of your application. So for example, a very simple and trivial feature flag that you can put in is something that looks like this. It may just be a JSON file with one entry where the key is, is enabled and the value is true. Maybe this is gating some kind of feature launch or some kind of new user experience. There's many different ways to use feature flags in your application. And then when it comes to actually using the value of this feature flag in your app, you would do something a little bit like this, although I did trivialize it a little bit here. So you would retrieve your configuration, have some kind of if statement that says, if the configuration is enabled, then we do something a little bit special. If it's not, then we just do our normal flow. So feature flags are a very, very common use case for application configuration and using them in app config is no different. Another common use case is for things like allow lists or deny lists. So maybe you have certain customers that are only allowed to use your application. Maybe you have another set of customers that are not allowed to use your application. A allow list or a deny list is a very convenient way to dynamically update that list without having to do an application deployment. Another common use case is for application tuning. Maybe you're just changing some parameters of your application. Tuning is another common use case. And the final one is a little bit more advanced and that is load shedding levers. So for example, if you have a service that's very, very important and has a bunch of different dependencies, one of those dependencies goes down, your APIs start blowing up and stop working. It would be really great if you can avoid calling that dependency and maybe just stub out a simplified response in light of that outage. Using App Config for this purpose allows you to quickly respond to outages in dependent services, especially if you run a very important and critical service used throughout an organization. So that's a little bit about what App Config is and some of the use cases involved in using App Config. Now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about why you should consider using App Config. What are the types of things it offers in terms of the benefits and why should you think about using it in the first place? So first of all, App Config is a managed hosting service that provides both reliability and performance. Since it's managed, there's no servers to think about or operate. As a user of App Config, AWS handles all of that for you. In addition, App Config operates on top of AWS's global infrastructure that has multiple availability zones and replicates your data across AZ so that you can be sure that it is durable and reliably present. Also offers some very high performance so that you can consistently retrieve your application configuration at scale, even if you have many thousands of hosts that are all asking for your configuration all at once. Another great benefit of App Config is that it provides mechanisms that allow you to prevent runtime errors due to malformed syntax. 
So if you've used any type of application configuration in the past, you've probably experienced someone fat fingering, maybe a comma or maybe an extra space or some kind of syntax error that resulted in runtime errors when you deployed your configuration on your APIs or on your service. Now app config includes additional guardrails to ensure that these types of syntax errors cannot be introduced in the first place. It does that through a use of something called validators, which is something I'm gonna be getting into a little bit later and showing you how to use in the demo section of this video. Now the next major benefit is in terms of safety. So app config allows you to safely introduce or safely deploy changes to your configuration using progressive rollouts and rollback alarms. So progressive rollouts refer to app config's ability to slowly dial up the presence of your new configuration update over a period of time so that you don't introduce it all at once and have some critical outage. You can also integrate rollback alarms directly into your application configuration so that, for example, if your app starts throwing a lot of 500 errors due to this new configuration update that you just deployed, App Config can hook into that CloudWatch alarm and automatically roll back your configuration to the previously working version. So this takes a lot of the guesswork out of monitoring your deployment after you do an App Config update and just makes it a lot more safe and convenient to use. The final benefit that I wanted to talk about was in terms of history. So using app config, you get update history using a provided change log in the AWS console. You can see the values that you've updated over time. You can see who updated them, the timestamps of them. And this is great from an auditability and transparency perspective. So that's a little bit about some of the core benefits of using AWS app config. Now let's talk a bit about how app config works from the user perspective. So it's a pretty simple process. It's a three-step process, actually. The first step involves you setting up app config. That can either be done in the AWS console, through the CLI, or using CDK, CloudFormation, Terraform, any infrastructure as code solution that you wish. Once you've set up app config and provided your initial configuration to the service, then it's time to integrate your application with app config. And there's two primary ways that you can do that. The first is through the usage of APIs. When you're using the APIs for app config, it's a two-step process. When your service boots up, the first thing that it needs to do is call an API called start configuration session. This is going to initialize your session and also return to you a token. You're going to use that token in every subsequent call when you use the get latest configuration API. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that app config is a pull based system. It is not a push based system. So what I mean by that is that if you have a fleet of EC2 machines that are relying on app config and someone makes a change to an application configuration through the AWS console, those EC2 machines are not automatically going to get the most updated version they need to pull app config to get that updated version. And then once they get the new version, they can cache it for a period of time and then call again in 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, whatever is tolerable for you. This is in contrast to some other configuration solutions that use a push-based system. And how that would work is when someone makes a change, it would push out the configuration to all the downstream hosts that exist in the environment. App Config does not work that way. It uses a pull-based system. So that's one thing that I wanted to clarify. A lot of people get confused over that. So it is a pull-based and not a push-based. So the API is one method that you can use to periodically refresh your app config. And what a lot of people do is they set up some kind of sidecar process that launches in addition to their app or their software. And that sidecar process will periodically call app config for new updates and then cache the values, make them available to your core application. Now that's a little bit of a tedious process to set up and get right and make sure it works properly. Now for those of you that are using something like AWS Lambda, I have some good news for you. Um, so there are some extensions that are available to you using AWS Lambda that make it easier to interact with App Config and retrieve your values. The extensions are available through Lambda layers and the App Config extension for Lambda will make it much easier to interact with App Config. In fact, the process that is included in the layer will automatically call the corresponding App Config APIs for you. 
you. So you don't need to worry about calling any APIs or doing anything special. You just make a very simple request on a specific port in your Lambda function, and then you're able to access all your values in app config. This is the method I'm gonna be showing you how to use in the demo section of this video when we walk through how to set app config up with AWS Lambda. So if you're confused, don't worry about it. We'll check it out a little bit later. So after you've integrated your application with APIs or using any of the extensions available, then it comes time to deploy your config. It's very trivial and straightforward to deploy a new configuration update. I'll walk you through how to do this in the console, but it just involves updating your values, selecting a deployment strategy, and then applying the deployment and watching it go along. So that's a brief explanation of how app config works and how you interact with it as a user. Let's move on now to briefly discuss some of the app config core concepts that you should know about when you're working with app config. So there's three concepts that I want to talk about here. The first one is environments. The second one is configuration profiles. And the third one is deployment strategies. Environments are very, very simple. They're just logical deployment groups that you can use to deploy your configuration to. So beta and prod, for example, can be two separate deployment group environments that you can create, and you can change the configuration for beta and prod independently. Obviously, if you have any kind of real life production application that's serving any customer traffic, maybe you want to experiment on beta before making your configuration change in prod. That's a very standard thing to do. And you can use different environments for that purpose. The second main concept is configuration profiles. And this is the section of app config where your config actually lives. So any JSON or any key value pairs that you want to store in app config, that's going to be as part of a configuration profile. And there's two different types of config profiles. There's freeform and then there's feature flag. Freeform allow you to use JSON, text, or YAML formats to define your configuration. And if you're using Freeform, one of the concerns with using this type is making sure that you don't have any syntax errors in a JSON file, for example, if that's the type that you're using. The Freeform mode comes with a feature called validators, and validators allow you to write JSON schema files that define what the structure of your input JSON should look like for your config. So for example, if you have a key value pair, maybe the key name is enabled and the value is a Boolean, it's either true or false, you can create a JSON schema validator that will know that this config file, anytime it's changed, it must contain the key called enabled and the value must be a Boolean, either true or false. If you ever try to incorporate a new config update and it doesn't follow that schema, the deployment will automatically fail. So this is a great safety guardrail that allows you to ensure that you don't accidentally introduce breaking changes in your config updates. Feature flag is kind of a more simplified and guided experience. Anyone that works at Amazon and knows what web lab is, then this should be familiar to you. Uh, it's more for what I see as short-term deployments or just features that you want to introduce relatively quickly into your app and then maybe discard after a short period of time. However, I personally prefer Freeform. I, I find that, as you would imagine, it allows you to be a lot more flexible with what you're putting into your config, and I prefer to use that as a user. Now, the third core concept that you need to know about is deployment strategies. Deployment strategies allow you to slowly roll out your config updates to a percentage of your targets. Targets can be you know, EC2 machines or your Lambda functions, whatever is polling for updates. Those are considered to be your targets. And when you're defining a configuration strategy, there's a couple main concepts to know about. There is a deployment type. So the rollout can either be either exponential or linear. Linear is just progressively rolled out over a fixed rate. And with exponential, the speed kind of grows over time. And then there's a step percentage. Step percentage just refers to the percentage jumps that your deployment will do in terms of exposing your new configuration update to calling clients. So if you set this to 10% and you do it over 10 minutes, then every one minute it would do 10% extra. So 10% on the first minute, 20% on the second minute, 30% on the third minute, all the way up to the 10th minute at 100%. And then there's deployment time, which simply refers to how long you want the deployment to take. And then there's bake time. And bake time just refers to the period after a deployment deploys to all of its targets, how long you want it to wait. Now you have the option of creating your own custom deployment strategies if you wish. Now there are also predefined deployment strategies that AWS makes available to you. So you can use some of the predefined ones like there's all at once, there's progressive, there's exponential growth or canary deployments. 
Um, there's a lot that are available for you, but if none of those fit your bill, then you can of course make your own. Now, one last thing I wanted to point out with deployment strategies, which makes it particularly powerful, is this concept of auto rollbacks. And auto rollbacks make it so that you can define a CloudWatch alarm that hooks into your application. And maybe that's based on errors, for example. So percentage of errors, if that ever exceeds, I don't know, 2%, then it's gonna fire your CloudWatch alarm. And when you combine this with deployment strategies, you can set it up so that anytime that alarm fires and a deployment is in progress, you can automatically instruct AppConfig to roll back that deployment to the previous known version. Very handy and very useful from a safety of deployment perspective and something that I would recommend folks to use. It does require a little bit of additional work. So there's IAM rules that you need to create. There's an alarm you need to create, but I do think that it is worth it. And if you're using AppConfig, you might as well take advantage of all the bells and whistles that are available to you. All right, so that's it for some of the core concepts. Let's move on now to talk about app config pricing. Now, app config uses a pretty traditional AWS model, and that is a pay for what you use model. So the more you use it, the more you get charged, the less you use it, the less you get charged. Now, unfortunately, app config does not qualify for free tier. So if you want to try it out, then unfortunately, you may need to spend a very small amount of money. But as you'll see in a moment, it's very, very affordable. And even if you want to test it out, it'll probably cost you pennies if that. Now, in terms of the pricing itself, there's two major dimensions that you're charged on in terms of using app config. The first is in terms of when you're performing configuration updates. So when you're changing your config. The second one is in terms of the frequency of calls you make to retrieve that configuration. So for the first, for configuration updates, you're charged a very reasonable rate of 0.0008 per configuration update received. That's very, very low. And unless you're doing a ridiculous amount of configuration updates every month, you're probably not even gonna notice this charge. It's just gonna be a rounding error. Now the API calls is where the majority of your cost may come from, especially if you have a very large fleet of machines that are all trying to get access to your application config. So the charge for API calls is 0.0000002 per configuration request. And I realize that these numbers are extremely, extremely small and it's hard to kind of grasp how much this is gonna actually cost you in real life. So I just put together a very quick example using the pricing calculator. So assume that you have one configuration change that's used across 100 hosts and those hosts are calling the get latest configuration API once per minute. In that case, you'll be charged $1.28 per month in the US East One region. So as you can see, very, very cheap, and this is with 100 hosts. I don't expect a lot of you have 100 hosts in the first place or are running an application where you need 100 hosts. So for most of you, it'll probably be pennies on the dollar to use app config, but just something to be aware of if you have some very, very large apps. Now, before we move on to the demo of using app config, I very briefly wanted to talk about how app config compares to other configuration management solutions. And the other popular one is AWS Parameter Store. So as we, we kind of learned, AppConfig offers a lot of deployment bells and whistles, a lot of monitoring, auto rollback, uh, also offers things like schema validation. So you don't accidentally introduce any syntax errors into your configuration that blows up your app. Parameter Store is a much simpler solution and it offers very simple config storage for key value pairs. Doesn't have all the bells and whistles for deployment and schema validation, just very simply allows you to define a key and define a value and then integrate it that way into your application. It does use a slightly different pricing model as well. It uses a flat rate for every parameter that you have and there's some additional pricing if you have some very high throughput requirements. But other than that, if you have very simple um, key value retrieval requirements for your configuration, then go with Parameter Store. If you want all the bells and whistles that go along with using App Config, then go ahead and go with that. All right, so that is a brief introduction of AWS App Config. I want to move on to the demo now, and the demo is going to consist of three steps. First, we're going to do some very basic App Config setup. I'm going to show you how to create an environment, a configuration profile, and to do a simple deployment. I'm going to show you how to incorporate App Config with a rollback alarm so that when you try to deploy an application and you have that configured with an alarm that's in alarm state, we'll see that it automatically rolls back in response to it. 
And then finally, I'm going to show you how to integrate Lambda with AppConfig. And we are going to be using the AWS Lambda AppConfig layers that make it a lot simpler for you to access config in your AppConfig environment. So that's what's in store for the demo. I'll see you over in the AWS console. Hello everyone, here we are in the AWS console. So in order to get started with AppConfig, we're going to navigate over to it in the top search box here. So we're just going to type in AppConfig and we're going to click on that and it's going to bring us to the console page for AppConfig. All right, so here is the home page. And first of all, we need to create an app config application. Application is just a container for your environment and for your configuration profiles. It's just an organizational structure that you can use. So to get started, let's go to create application here. We're gonna give our application a name. So we're gonna call this my app in this case, or you can name this whatever you wish. There are some options to be aware of here. So if you want to associate certain extensions with your app config application, you can. And if you take a look at this, uh, there's extensions that you can choose here. And there's an app config deployment events to EventBridge, to SQS and SNS. What this basically means is that anytime you do a configuration deployment update with your app config application, it's going to automatically trigger events to EventBridge, SQS or SNS. This is great if you want to get notified when these config updates are happening. Um, uh, if you have any kind of use case where you need to respond to them. We're not going to be doing that in this case because we have no need for it, but it may be useful for some of you. All right, so let's go to create application now and we're pretty much good to go and we're ready to get started creating our config. So I want to start with creating our environment and the environment is just a logical deployment group that you're going to be deploying your configuration profiles to. Um, so let's go ahead and do that first. So we're going to click on environments here and we're going to create a new environment. So I'm just going to call this one, um, you can call this whatever you want, like a test or a beta or a prod environment. I'm just going to call mine beta. And then there are monitors that you can associate with your environment. And these monitors require a IAM role and a CloudWatch alarm. And these are used during the deployment process. So if any alarm fires while you're doing a new configuration deployment, AppConfig is automatically going to get notified and trigger a rollback of your deployment whenever that alarm fires. We're not going to do this right away. I'm going to come back to this after I set everything up and show you how you can incorporate a rollback alarm monitor into your AppConfig setup. So I'm just going to minimize that. There's extensions here again if you want to do it at an environment level or an application level. It's up to you. We're pretty much good to go now to create our environment. So I'm going to click that. All right. So this is where you're going to be monitoring your environment deployments. So you can see like we have no monitors here yet. We have no deployments yet because we haven't deployed any of our configuration yet. In fact, that is the next thing that we want to do. So we want to go back to our app that we just created under my app. And now I'm going to switch gears to configuration profiles and feature flags. And now, as we mentioned, configuration profiles are kind of the containers for your config, whether that be JSON and YAML or just plain text that you want to store in app config. Um, we're going to be using JSON in this tutorial, but you can also use those other ones as well. So after clicking on that, we're going to go to create here. And this is gonna ask us what type of configuration profile would we like to create? Would you like to create a feature flag or would you like to create a freeform configuration? I'm gonna use the freeform configuration because I think that it allows you to do a lot more and be a lot more flexible. And I find that it's a lot more applicable for the most of you that are gonna be using app config in general. So let's click on that radio box there. And we're gonna click on select now. And now it's going to ask us for a bunch of different configuration settings for our profile. So the first thing we need to do is specify a name for our configuration profile. So I'm going to call this the customer IDs uh, configuration profile. And this is going to store us, actually, you know what, let's just add allow list here to indicate that these customer IDs are going to be in our allow list for our, for our application. And then we need to specify the configuration source. Now app config is kind of interesting. You can host your configuration within app config itself. You can also host it within an external source such as Amazon S3, Systems Manager, Systems Manager Parameter, or Code Pipeline. If you add any of these, you're going to need to reference the corresponding details for each specific source. So for S3, we need to provide the location of the object that we want to use for our configuration. Same thing for any of these other ones. The configuration is slightly different depending on what you select. Using the AWS app config hosted configuration is by far the most simple. So that's what we're going to be using for this demonstration. 
All right, so since we selected that, now we need to specify our content. So like I said, you can specify text, JSON, or YAML. I'm going to just drop in a very simple uh, JSON file that I prepared previously, and this just contains um, some customer IDs that are gonna be part of our allow list for this configuration profile. So our object has a key called customer IDs, and then we have one, two, and three in here. So these are the IDs that are allowed on our allow list. One minor correction here, I seem to have forgot to have selected the JSON type and I left it as text, even though the input file is JSON. I would have expected this to throw some type of error either now or through the JSON validation process, but this seemed to work fine. Just something to be aware of. All right, so you don't need to do anything else for this. You can put a description in if you wish, but that's optional. We're gonna go ahead and click on next now. And this is asking us for different validators that we want to apply to ensure that we don't accidentally introduce any syntactically incorrect configuration updates to our app config profile. Now you can either do this by using a JSON schema, which is you kind of write like a template file that specifies what the structure of your app config profile looks like, or you can do it in an AWS Lambda function where uh, as a validation step, app config will invoke your Lambda, your Lambda can do some custom logic to ensure the update is valid and then return a successful response and then app config will proceed. JSON schema is what we're gonna be going for in this demo and I'll show you kind of what this process looks like. So it's asking us for a JSON schema file here and there's a lot that you can do with JSON schema and I'm just going to drop in a piece of code here that I've already prepared um, that shows you how to enforce the customer IDs array list that we put in for our structure. Bear with me for a sec, I'm just gonna grab this. Okay, there we go. All right, so just pasted that in really quick. So this is what the JSON schema file looks like. So let's just walk through this really quick. Uh, you can ignore most of it. Uh, type object, that's because our input file is a JSON object. We have some properties. Our property is customer IDs. Remember that is the key that we put in in our config update. And you can put in different types. So you can ensure that this is an array. It can be an integer, it can be a list, any other types that are supported. You can also put in whether or not certain fields are required. So I put in customer IDs, which basically indicates that customer IDs is mandatory. Now, if you put in a field here under required and you don't provide that value in your configuration update, your deployment is gonna fail right away. It's not even gonna go to the first step. It's just gonna fail the validation and tell you to go and fix your error. So this is very, very handy to use to validate your config so you don't get any errors into your config update. All right, so we're pretty much good to go here. Let's scroll down and we're gonna go to create configuration profile. All right, so our configuration profile is created. We have this initial step here, so one, two, and three. You can also change this. You can see there's different versions that are available. So we're on version one right now. I can just add an additional customer ID in here. Actually, oops, you need to go to create first to create a new one. And let's just add a new one here. And let's just add four and then create that hosted version. And now you should see there is version two and this has the four in it. And if we go back here, you can see the previous versions. So this is what I was referring to as the audit trail for your configuration profile. So you can see all the changes over time. Very handy just for transparency in your config updates. All right, so now we are pretty much good to go. If we go back to the homepage for our app, we should see, yep, we have our customer IDs allow list. We also have an environment now, which is our beta environment. And what we can do is we can go into this environment and start a deployment. So let's do that now. We're gonna click on beta. And in the top right here, we're gonna go to start deployment. And this is gonna prompt us for a couple options. So let's click on that. And it's asking us uh, what configuration do we want to deploy? Obviously the one we just created, or you can create a brand new one from here. What version do you want to deploy? We do want to deploy the most recent one, so version two. And now we need to specify a deployment strategy. Now these are the deployment strategies. I didn't create these. These are all automatically provided by AWS. Let's talk about them really quick, but do note that if you don't like any of these deployment strategies and they're not satisfactory, you can create your own with any of the custom settings that you want to provide. 
So the first one here is probably the most simple. It is just all now. So it's an instant deployment. So for any of your targets that are currently polling for configuration updates, it is immediately going to start returning the new update. So version two in this case. Then there is the all at once with a 10 minute big time. So you, you can actually see here the settings. So it's zero minutes deployment time for the first one, zero minute big time, 100% right away, growth type is linear. This next one is almost the same, except that it has a big time of 10 minutes. The next one is a little bit more progressive. So it's a deployment time of one minute. It's got another big time of one minute and it does 50% jumps or 50% steps every 30 seconds, right? So 50% divided by one minute is every 30 seconds and the growth type is linear. Now this next one is a much slower and much safer deployment method. This is AWS recommended. They call this an app config canary 10% over 20 minutes. This will deploy over 20 minutes. There's a big time of 10 minutes. It's gonna grow at 10% rates, but the growth type is exponential. So it'll go 10 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 80, and then all the way up to 100. So for us, since this is just a very quick demo, let's just do the all now one so I can show you what this looks like. And we're gonna do start deployment. And you can see here, it's automatically at 100% right after I did this. So if you were to start calling the start configuration session and then get latest configuration APIs, you would immediately start getting version number two in your API call. All right, so that was a very trivial deployment. You'll probably won't be using this type of deployment in real life because it's kind of pretty dangerous. You're going from zero to 100 right away. Uh, what you'll probably do is a slower deployment and then you'll incorporate a monitor that can automatically detect for issues and roll back the deployment to a previous version if it detects any kind of errors. So I wanna show you how to set that up because it is a little bit tricky and I think it is very useful. So as you can see here right now, we don't have monitors that are attached to this environment that we're deploying to. So you can see no monitors exist for this environment. So we're gonna change that and I do have a alarm that I already set up and it's just a kind of fake alarm. I called it the Lambda error alarm. It's not actually hooked up to my Lambda function. I'm just going to use it to attach it to our app config setup. And then I'm going to manually put this into alarm state during the deployment and you'll see how app config responds to it. So just know that that's what I'm doing here and there's no black magic going on. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up. So let's go back to app config here. And we are going to go to our environment, which was beta in this case. Actually, really quick, I just noticed um, you can see here now there's the deployment history. So you can see over time, you know, we did deployment number one. Here was the name. Here's the version. Here's the state. And here is the timestamp. Just wanted to point that out. This is where all your deployment logs will show. Uh, but yeah, let's continue on updating our environment to incorporate this alarm here. So we're going to go to update environment. And now we're gonna expand out the monitor section of the console. And so what it's asking for here is an IEM role and an alarm that we want to hook into. The alarm we've already created, that's our Lambda error alarm. However, there is an IEM role that you need to provide that has the correct permissions associated with it. It needs two permissions. It needs a policy, and that policy needs to allow it to call CloudWatch's Describe Alarms API. And then it also needs a trust relationship so that app config is allowed to assume the IEM role. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna duplicate this tab and we're gonna go ahead and create that role with the right policy and with the right trust relationship so that we can provide it in that section of the console. So I'm gonna to go to IEM and let's just go and create that policy and role really quick. Uh, so IEM, we're gonna to go to roles and we're gonna create a new role in the top right here and uh, we're gonna do custom trust policy just so we don't have to uh, look at any of this stuff. And I'm just gonna drop in my trust relationship here. I'll make this available to you so you don't have to copy it out of the video, but it's a very, very simple trust policy. The only thing I changed from what I just copied and pasted in is under principle, we have a service and that's appconfig.amazonaws.com and the action that we are allowing is STS assume role. So that's the trust policy for this role. Let's go down now and click on next. We also need to provide it with a policy. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna to go to create policy at the top here and we, we can either do it through JSON or the visual editor. I'll just show you how to do it through, through here so you don't have to paste in a config file. Uh, so we're gonna type in CloudWatch, okay. And I believe it's under read 
And yeah, there it is, describe alarm. So that's the permission that you need. And you can give it a specific resource name, so a specific alarm that you wanna give permissions to. I'm gonna give it to all resources here, just as a quick little step. Then we're gonna click on next, and next again to review. Give this thing a name, so CW describe alarms is fine with me. And now we're gonna to go to create policy in the bottom right. And this may take a moment or so. All right, so the policy has been created. Just make sure that um, if we go back to the other tab really quick, we need to attach it. So I'm gonna refresh and CW something something is what I called it. There it is. Oh, I misspelled that, awesome. Uh, so we're gonna click on that, go to next and give this a name. So um, app config CW or whatever you want here. And we're gonna see it's got the right trust relationship. It's got the right policy attached to it. Let's go ahead and create the role now. And yep, it's creating the role. We can close out the IAM tabs because we don't need to come back here, at least for a little while, and then go back to Systems Manager. Um, oops, sorry about that. Unfortunately, I don't think that this uh, refreshes. Yeah, so you need to refresh the page in order for the IAM role to update. So let's just do that. So we're going back to beta, update environment, and monitors and let's find our app config cw uh, role here and now let's set the policy or the, the alarm rather which is the lambda error alarm make sure you click on this add button here or else it'll automatically skip the monitor um, don't ask me how i know all right so now we can click on update environment here and there you go. So now we have a monitor that is attached to our beta environment. So let's try to do another deployment and then I'm gonna trigger the alarm of our uh, Lambda Air alarm during that deployment and you're gonna see this attempt to auto roll back. Uh, so let's try that now. So we're gonna go to start deployment and okay, customer ID allow list. Let's do, we're gonna go back to version number one. And then we're gonna make this a slower deployment. So this one is supposed to take around 20 minutes. And yeah, so that's suitable for our use case. So let's start this deployment. And now you'll see this time it's a lot slower. Um, and so, you know, it's only 0% now. So this will dial up. You can track the progress over time. Now let's go and look at our CloudWatch alarm. You can see here the state is, it's fine. It's an okay state. It's got insufficient data right now. If I refresh this, nothing changed. So let me pull in my um, terminal here and I'm just gonna run a command really quick that will trigger this alarm into alarm state. And then we are going to watch the results. Um, so I'm just gonna change something here. We're gonna set this to alarm. And then let's look at this uh, command. So we're saying AWS CloudWatch set alarm state. We're providing the alarm name, Lambda error alarm. We're providing the state value, which is alarm. And then we are providing the state reason, which is for testing purposes. So just pressing enter now. Okay, that succeeded. Let's look at this. Okay, it's in alarm. Let's go back to our deployment. And there you go. So it's already picked it up. It's already trying to roll back or already did the rollback. And you can see deployment was stopped due to CloudWatch alarm. So that shows you how to use this feature. Like I said, it does require a little bit of extra work, but it is very useful from a safety and deployment perspective. All right, so that is it for showing you how to just set up app config. Now I wanna show you how to incorporate app config into a Lambda function using the Lambda layers feature. Uh, so let's go and do that now. So we're gonna go into, um, actually gonna open up this separate tab here. We don't need this alarm tab anymore. So let's just go into Lambda and we're gonna go there and we're gonna create a brand new function. I'm gonna go to the top right here, click on create function. You can call this whatever you want. Um, app config demo is good for me. And we are gonna be using Python with this uh, tutorial. So Python 3.9 and permissions, we're just gonna use a default role. Then we're gonna to need to add some additional permissions on top of this role once this is created. So let's go to create function right now. And this should take a moment because it needs to create the IAM role and provision everything, but let's just let this go. All right, so that succeeded eventually. And now what we need to do is we want to add that layer that makes it easy for us to integrate with app config. Now, one thing that I wanna point out is that you don't need to use this layer process. If you want, you can use your Lambda and you know in your code, you can write the code to call app configs, uh, start configuration session and get latest configuration APIs if you wish. Uh, however, using the layer makes that process a lot simpler and makes it so that that sidecar process that goes out with your Lambda function deployment 
automatically retrieves your app config configuration and then makes it available to your Lambda function just through a local call. So that's the approach that we're gonna use in this tutorial. So I'm gonna click on layers now and we're gonna to go to add layer here in the bottom right. You can see there's no layers currently attached here. So we're gonna to go to add layer. And the neat thing about this is that it's already included as an already provided AWS layer. So leave this as selected, AWS layers. And then under AWS layers for choose, we're gonna use the AWS app config extension. As you can see, it's for feature flags, other configuration data for your Lambda functions. We're gonna click on this and just select the version. You can go with the most recent one, which is the only one available, and then click on add. So this is going to add that layer so that anytime you deploy your Lambda, this extension is gonna go out with it. Now we're not ready to edit the code yet because we need to add some additional IAM policy permissions to our Lambda function. So that layer has the right permissions to call the start configuration session API and the get latest configuration API as part of app config. So we're gonna go and change that really quick. So let's go to configuration here and we want to go to permissions. And so this is the role that's attached. As you can see, this only has CloudWatch logs permissions right now. This is gonna change after we attach the, the right permissions to our role. So I'm gonna click on this, it opens it up in a new tab and wow, lots of things going on. All right, so we're gonna go to add permissions here and we're gonna say create inline policy. We're gonna to go to service now and type in app config. And for actions, uh, I believe one is under read and one is under write. So for read, uh, get latest configuration. There it is, get latest configuration. And under write is start configuration session. So we want that one as well. All right, so minimizing those. For resources, I'm gonna again set this to all. Very, very naughty, but um, that's what I'm gonna be doing to make my life easier. And then go to review policy now. Give this policy a name, so app config, config extension, whatever you want. Create that policy. And I believe this should automatically attach to our role. So yeah, this is still our role for our Lambda function. And now we have that basic execution role. We also have this new role or new policy rather that has the two APIs that we need. All right, so we can close this tab now. Going back to our Lambda function, I'm just gonna press F5 to refresh the page. And we should see now we have two actions, as you can see, under app config. And if we click on that, you can see here we have app config, get latest and start configuration session here. All right, so we are ready to update our code to actually test this thing out. So let's go to the code section and I am just gonna drop in some code that again, I will make available to you so that you can copy it from, um, from Gist or from GitHub or wherever I put it. I'll put that in the description section below. So let me uh, replace this with our code here and I'll explain to you what is happening. So uh, what you may notice here when you quickly look at this is that we are not using any traditional, you know, Bodo 3 Python APIs to communicate with app config. Instead, what we're doing is that we are using the URL, URL lib request library, and we are creating a reference to a URL on the local host on port 2772. And then we are opening or making a request to that port with a specific configuration here. And then we're just returning that back. This is because the side process that is automatically retrieving the configuration file for us is contained within our Lambda container. So we're not making a normal get request using the Bodo3 library. Instead, we're just calling a process that is on a different port, in this case, 2772. So we need to replace some things here. So under slash applications, then application name, I think mine was called like my app or something like that. And then environment name, that was beta. I know that for sure. And then configuration name, I can't remember what I put there. So let's just go back and go to my app. And okay, so it's customer IDs allow list. Just gonna copy that. And you can also, if you want to retrieve more than one configuration at a time, you can also do that. I'll show you in the documentation where it references that. 
All right, so we're gonna paste in the new configuration name. So customer IDs dash allow list. And then this just makes the call, then this returns. We're gonna deploy this now. And while this is deploying, I just wanna show you the documentation really quick. Um, so I'll also make this link available, or you can just type in like whatever this says, AWS app config integration with Lambda into Google to find this page. This explains to you, you know, how this thing works. It's got your Lambda function. It's got the extension. Uh, it's got a local configuration cache that will retrieve the value and store it there by using the SDK and that thing communicates with app config. What I did want to show you was a couple things. Um, the types of um, values that you can override through environment variables. So these are the ones here. So you can override a bunch of the different settings. So say you want to use a different port. You don't like 2772, for example, or maybe you already have a side process running on 2772. You can change that value by putting in an environment variable that is this name and with a different value. So maybe 2773, for example. Another important one, at least that I think, is the interval to pull for a new configuration update. So what this means is that every X period of time, the extension is going to call app config for a refreshed version of whatever is there. So this is by default 45 seconds. We can override this to something smaller if we wish, maybe five seconds, 10 seconds. But just remember that the AWS app config pricing model, you're charged by the number of times you use that get latest configuration API. So if you have a very high throughput application and you set this to a value very, very low, then you may be charged a lot of money. Uh, if you set this to a value that's really, really high, then you suffer from having stale configuration if someone doesn't update. So you kind of need to pick a balanced value. Uh, if you're okay with having stale information in your Lambda for a period, you can set this to a larger value. If you always want the most up-to-date information and you're willing to pay extra, then you can set this to really, really low, like one second, five seconds or whatever, and just be confident that you're always gonna get that updated value pretty much much right away. So I'm going to show you actually how to change this just, just for um, you know education purposes of how you can modify this. So we're going to go, we're going to copy that to our clipboard, by the way. I'm going to go back into our Lambda now and let's go to configuration and under environment variables and edit and add environment variable. And we're just going to paste that in. By default, it was 45. Let's set this to five, for example, and click on save now. And now you can see this value has been set here. So we're good to go. I think we also need to redeploy if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe not, it did say successfully updated the function app config demo. So it may have done a deployment for us, but let's just test everything out to make sure that this is working correctly. So we're gonna go to test now. We need to provide a test event just the first time. Uh, put in whatever here, it doesn't matter. We're not reading off the input anyways. Go ahead and click on save now. And we are gonna test this out. And if you recall, this should return a um, object that has customer IDs one, two, three in it. So let's see if this worked. And there it is. Actually, we're on version two, which has one, two, three, four. And so that's how you can use this extension. And as you can see in the logs here, you can see it's doing some additional stuff. So it's registering the extension, it's starting up that extension on port 2772, and then making it available for you. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this demo and learned a lot about how AppConfig works with AWS Lambda. If you enjoyed this video, check out these other ones that I have on AWS. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.